Have you ever wanted to add the feature that on a column or a sheet that when a cell is added or updated that a note will be added with a timestamp in the user? In today's video, I'm going to show you how to do just that. So do you ever need to have a last updated on individual cells? So I've had other videos where you can add a last updated to a whole row, but it doesn't specify when each value was updated. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to add a last updated note to individual cells. So let's go ahead and open up our script by going to extensions and app script and we'll get started. So once our script is created, we can go ahead and name this. And then we're going to use a native function here called on edit. So make sure you type it just like that. And then we're going to use E here. You could do event, you could do whatever. I use E for just simplicity. And what that stands for is the event object, which contains data about what was changed. So for example, the tab, the column and the row and the value. And for this example, I'm going to show you how to do it just for a single column if you want or we can do it where it's going to do on any column. So let's go ahead and jump right in. And first of all, let's get the data from that event object. And so, for example, we're going to get the range that was changed with E dot range, the source sheet, dot source, get active sheet, and then the row and the column. And then finally the value. All right, so first of all, we're just going to start with if any value is added. Now, one thing to keep in mind is this value is going to be either what was entered in. So, for example, if you selected a different status, then that val would be equal to warm. But if we deleted it, that val would be equal to a blank string. So if you want to record that it was changed to a blank string as well, then we can do that accordingly. So I'm just going to put it like this. We're just going to do status right now. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're going to use a if statement here. If column is equal to six. And so notice we're using equals here, but equals a single one is assignment. So it means val is now equal to what range dot get value. The double equals is comparing. And so this is going to evaluate down to a true or false. And so if call call or column that was edited was the status, then this would be true and this code would execute. If it was any other column, then it would not. So we can do this and let's just do it with a val. So we'll just do not equal to blank. If you want to do blank or not blank, then you can leave this off. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to get a time. And so we're just going to do let today equal to new date. And then we could format that as well if you like. And so we could do something like today equals to, um, or we could do it in here as well. And let's just do it here. Utilities, format date. And then we could do that in here. And so what we need here is some kind of time zone. And then how we want it to show up. So we could do month, date, and then year, year, like that. Maybe we'll add our time here just like that and so this is the format for doing a 12 um, hour time there's our minutes and then this is for a.m. p.m. and then what we'll do is we'll actually set that note on our cell and we'll do that by referring to our tab and get a range and we have that range because we just need a row and a column there and then we're going to do set note and we're just going to add that today now we could do something like which allows us to put in that verb like this. And then we could do last modified, or you can just do just the date if you prefer. So now at this point, we can go ahead and change something. And then it'll add a note there with our last modified. And so right now, this will not do anything if we change this to 7400, for example. It won't do anything here. And so if we don't want it to be column specific, we can get rid of that. Now, one thing we may want to do is we may want to set, for example, what tab we're working on if we only want it on this tab. 
then we want to do something like source.getName is equal to data. And then the way we combine multiple conditions is double ampersand. So this will only run if the value is not blank and we're on the data tab. Now, one thing, if you may be modifying these, you might want to exclude that as well. And so you can do is row greater than one, just like that. So let's go ahead and check this out now. So let's set this back. I don't remember if it was four or five, but we'll just do that. And there we go, last modified. So that is how you can set a last updated note to a cell. And so you can restrict by columns or by rows. And so if you want to do a range of columns, let's say you wanted to keep this one as static, so you don't want anything to do anything here and not here, but if any of these three are edited, but none of these three. So in that case, what we do is we do a column is greater than three. So one, two, three. So it'd be four, five, or six. And so let's just change this to Wayne. And see, nothing's changing. But if we change this to finance, there it is. So you can also set this between. And so if you want to do, um, for example, if we want to do just this date or these, but not those two, you could do com is greater than three or we'd have to do this. So if we want to do an or, we got to wrap these in parentheses and we can do column is less than two or column is greater than three. And so these two pipe symbols indicate an or, but we got to wrap them. Otherwise it's going to mess up with the rest of the stuff. So we got to join these together. Now, if we look at this, um, this still will not do anything. If I do Katie, nothing's happening. If I change this, to eight, that's going to get a note. All right, so I reset these notes. I want to do one more thing on here is adding the username on here as well. And so technically you can only get their email. And so we're going to do user and this is session. Get active user, get email. And then down here, I'm just going to add it to this. So I'm going to make it a new line by doing backslash N. And then we can do by, for example, here. And then user. I'm just doing a dollar sign, curly brace, and curly brace. And then this backslash is, creates a template literal string where we can pull in those variables. And so last modified date by user. Let's go ahead and check this out. Make sure this is saved. And then now if we go change this to hot, for example, it's going to add a note there with last modified and by the username. So one thing you could do in here if you wanted is you could map those emails. And so you could do let users and then we could do something like this. And then we could do sheets ninja sensei at gmail.com. And then this could be Sheets Ninja. And then what you do here is user equals users user. So I just am reusing this variable. And then instead of saying let here, because I don't need to do that because I already have this variable, I'm just reassigning it. And I'm looking up this email in here. And so you can add as many of these as you like. All you do is separate with comma and then repeat the same thing. So a string with email, colon, and then their name. And so you can map this out if you have people in your organization and you can do it just like this. So let's go ahead and check this out real quick. And so I'm just going to go ahead and take the same one, rename it, and we'll see if that gets modified. So there we go. Now it changed that email address to an actual username that I can set in this back end. So you can just set up this user map for your users and then as they use it, it'll mark it when it got modified and who modified it. All right, so that is it for today's video. Make sure to check out the other videos on our channel for more tutorials on both Google Sheets and AppScript. And as always, have a great day.